you look at people who have presence, charisma, and influence, you notice one thing, that they all are congruent. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about congruence. Tony Robbins once said, if you have two people, two people come in in a room, and they talk with each other, the person who's more congruent is going to influence the other person in the long run. So congruence is very important. Let me give you a story from history. In the 15th century, that's about 600 years ago, in France, imagine you're there. Now, if you are a female, 600 years ago in France, you're automatically in a lower class. Okay? What's lower than, than a female? Peasant. There's one step, a child. Okay. So if you're a female who's 16 years old, then you're less than a female. Who's... Who's uh, less than a 16-year-old female? A peasant. You got it, right? So, basically... <laughs> the first answer. So, basically, if you are a female, if you are a 16-year-old female, if you're a peasant 16-year-old female, you're screwed in France in the, in, the, in the 15th century. Because you have no say in society. You have very little influence. You are very insignificant. Now, that's true except for one 16-year-old girl who was a peasant and was very poor, wasn't educated. Her name is John of Arc. You've probably seen the movie. Okay? And it's a true story. See, John of Arc at 16, with no formal education, no background in hypnosis or NLP or, or any persuasion methods, she convinced the Lord in her town to take her to the king. So you can have a meeting with the king of France. Okay? The king of France. She met with the king. She persuaded the king to wage battles against the British. This is a peasant, a 16-year-old peasant girl. So, and she persuaded the king to, to accompany the armies that are going to go to the battle. Then she persuaded the army general to put her in, in, in command in command of the army. Then she, she influenced the, all the soldiers to follow her command. And this is a 16-year-old peasant girl. How? It was with congruence. She had a vision. She said, oh, she, God sent her, gave her a vision. And she believed it so, so, uh, so much that every cell of her body was saying, oh, this is true. When she met with the king, when she met with the generals, when she met with the army, and they all believed her. Can you believe it? Isn't that awesome? That's the power of congruence. And congruence is easy. I'll show you, I'll show you a method. First, let me give you a demonstration. Just follow me, okay? Okay? Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your wrist. Okay. I said wrist. How, how come how, how come you went to the elbow? I saw you. How come you went to the elbow? Uh, because you did each step as you said them, and then you switched saying with doing. Yeah. See, when you're communicating, you're sending. You're always sending three messages. First message is physical. You're you're sending a physical message. You're here. You're talking. You're talking with your hands, with your presence. That's the first message you're sending to the audience. The second thing you're sending is an emotional message. It's with your emotions, how you're feeling on the inside. The third message you're sending is, is logical, and that's the words you're using. Now, the most important message you send is actually emotional, because that's the emotional mind processes things much faster than any other mind. And then, so the mind gets that message first. And the second message is the visual, what you do with your body. Uh, so, so the mind takes that. And the third one, and that's the least significant, and that's the words that you talk, that you, you talk and you use. Now, it, the words will become significant in one case only. That's if there's incongruence between the three messages. If, you're, if your gestures don't match your words or your gestures don't match your emotions, then your mind will be like, oh, phew, something is wrong here. There's something wrong. Pay attention, and you normally wouldn't trust that person. But if everything is congruent and going in the same direction, then you will believe that person. Like, wow, oh, 
that's true, that's, that's honest, right? So, the, the, here's, here's how you're going to practice. You're going to practice this up here. The first time you're going to do it, I want you in the first warm-up speech, I want you to exaggerate it. I want you to use motions and, and uh, your whole, move your whole physiology when you're talking. And exaggerate, push the limits, so it becomes part of you. That, over time, will develop congruence in you. Make sense? Yeah. Make sense? So, uh, so imagine a 16 year, what, what a 16-year-old can do. She can influence nations. Now imagine what you can do. 